Feeling very tropical, Jay. Understandable, understandable. We see coaches in his office again. Still in the office, you know me. Always in the <laughs> office. <laughs> Uh, first things first, Devin. I heard you, we heard you uh, had a, a birthday the other day. Happy birthday! Oh, thank you. I appreciate that, uh, Jay. It was a it was a really good birthday for uh, what I can do. You know, we're under quarantine, so not too much I can uh, do there. Well, I, I doubled yours and more last week, my fiftieth, and I, it was pouring rain outside. My family, they somebody got me dinosaurs on my lawn. I don't know who. Um, then six cars drove by, and. Uh, and they, they gave me a, a 50th birthday parade. So it's a different, wow. way to, different way to celebrate, right? Yeah. Happy belated birthday to you, too. Oh, no problem. I think Kev's that's, catching that's, up to me. That's pretty good. That's all six of the people Jay knows. <laughs> <laughs> well, you three didn't show up, and De- Devin has an excuse because he's out of town. So yeah, I, I could have had eight, right? Uh, I guess so. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so one thing, another thing I want to mention before we get right into the show um, announcement this morning from the, the Agoma basketball program on the women's side. Allison Reed, 5'6", uh, uh, shooting guard from Thunder Bay, has joined the program for 2021. So we'd like to welcome Allison into, into the, yes. the Agoma program. Your thoughts on that, ATM? Definitely, man. My man, Coach Vitri, doing, doing his thing, recruiting. Um, uh, w- welcome to the new uh, Thunderbird, women's Thunderbird. You know, we're going to be traveling together, everyone. So, you know, welcome to the family. I can't wait to see you on the court. So, Devin, it's, it's something we talked about off camera and before we get into about your training and everything else, your, your home in Ottawa. Talk, talk a little yep. bit about what you're doing during this uh, pandemic and being quarantined. Well, uh, I've really just been, uh, I think, trying to find myself mentally, uh, st- just trying to get mentally stronger, um, trying to find myself every day to work out with the things I got. Um, I know, Coach, uh, we coach has been doing reports with the guys and I even sent in a little video of me squatting uh, my 80 pound uh, pit bull so you know you got to use what you got to use at the end of the day um, but you know I try, I try to keep busy um, I try not to procrastinate with little things like just laying on the couch and stuff I always try to stand up keep moving whether it's walking the dogs or working out cleaning the house just I'm just really trying to stay busy and not get into that lazy mentality um, just really try to stay hungry so, Coach, you know, now that Devin's cleaning the house, you know that the stall's going to be clean all season, eh? Definitely. It's going to be clean, and uh, I, know who, I know who to find if it's not. <laughs> okay, so, too much. At, at this point, Kev, I'll turn it over to you for a little bit, and uh, you can uh, go ahead and uh, talk to Devin and Coach a little bit. Thanks, Jay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, talk a little bit about recruiting. I want to just chime in on, on uh, the new recruit on the women's side and uh, Coach Petrie. I don't know how he does it, but just keeps getting, uh, you know, top recruits out of uh, the Thunder Bay area. So congratulations, Ryan, on locking up Allison Reed. And uh, can't wait to see her wearing the red and white next season. And coach, I know you've been hitting the, we've been talking about it for weeks, right? Hitting the recruitment trail and uh, bringing in new bodies on the men's side. And so uh, exciting, exciting stuff. But uh, listen, I, I sort of neglected coach last week, so I thought I'd go to him first this week. And uh, I, wanted to, uh, I wanted to hear from uh, Coach Jacquet about uh, Devin and about, uh, you know, what he, what he saw last year from Devin, what he expects to see this year, and just the type of player he is and the type of person he is on off the court. Uh, really, when we talk about uh, Devin Mira, uh, you talk about a high-character kid, a uh, kid that's looking for an opp- that was looking for an opportunity and kind of proved himself last year, uh, definitely. So, um, Devin, we kind of talked about a little bit, but his role is going to go up a little bit higher. Uh, actually, we're going to have a, a little bit of a kind of a presentation a little after the show uh, where I kind of uh, let everyone know what their roles are going to be like and everything. And Devin's role is going to be one of, of, of the one, one of the ones that's going to be uh, going up. Uh, he's really going to be uh, in charge of uh, taking care of certain guys on the other team, probably the best offensive player, or the best guard on the other team. He's going to be defending these guys and he's, he, he kind of knows what that role is going to be like. Um, so for him, it's going to give him a lot of more opportunities to, to be better offensively as well. I mean, if you're on the court and you're defending these guys, you get a lot more opportunities offensively to do what you need to do. Um, the other thing is he's a champion. Um, I mean, and he understands what it takes to get to that next level. You understand? And I like the fact that he talked about 
hunger. And that's where we're trying to go. We're trying to bring the guys that are hungry uh, to the forefront. Uh, and Devin is going to be that guy. Um, not to be too precise because Devin doesn't know the full details yet, but he knows his role is going to go up, uh, especially defensively and uh, also uh, in terms of leadership with uh, an example, in terms of building our culture and our character. Yeah, thanks, Coach. That's great. And you talked about hunger. And, Devin, you mentioned, uh, you know, not wanting to fall into the lazy bad habits uh, while you're self-isolating under quarantine, whatever we're calling it these days. But, um, you know, if there's one thing uh, that I certainly wouldn't have said about you watching you last season, uh, I wouldn't have used the word lazy. Uh, I thought you brought a lot of energy every game. So talk to us a little a bit about that, about what you think you bring to the court uh, when you get on the court, you know, you came off the bench a lot last year. So, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about your mentality and what you bring to the court. Um, I mean, after my first year, I really realized that coach really trusted me defensively. Uh, I, I think I've really shown myself in that aspect of the game. So, I mean, um, I just try and bring the energy defensively every game because I feel like you, everyone knows the key word there, defensive, defense wins championships. So, uh, I've always carried that with me since high school, and I always thought if we're going to win a game, it's going to be through defense. So I, um, I really want to focus on energy on defense next year coming in, um, being that, that, that voice where people are excited to be on defense more than offense. I think that's a, an important thing that needs to be done, and um, that's where I really want my energy to be put. Um, I also need to work offensively with uh, what I've been doing uh, this year, I, or last year, sorry, I uh, kind of struggled a little bit offensively. But, uh, I mean, my energy right now, I feel, is on the defensive side of things. So so you mentioned the defensive side, and, and you know, uh, anyone who's coached the game knows that that's where it starts. It starts from the defensive end of the floor, and that's where you get out in transition, and, and you can get some easy baskets. That's also where you keep points off the board. Um, a lot e well, I shouldn't say a lot easier to keep them off the board than to put them on, but sometimes yeah. it is. Uh, yeah. So, you know, you talk about, about uh, you know, bringing that energy defensively. Um, what can you do uh, when you are in this sort of self-isolation? Uh, what can you do to prepare defensively? Offensively is one thing. You know, you can get out, you can, you can shoot the ball, you can dribble. Um, how do you stay uh, you know, defensively fit? if you will? Um, well, I've been doing a lot, of, a lot of shuffling drills, but not just any regular shuffling drills. I put a lot of bands around. My, I put a band around my knee and my ankles, and I'll literally just shuffle back and forth around the house, and I really feel it in the legs. And I feel um, if I do enough of that, I'll be better myself defensively. But um, in terms of keeping the energy there, um, I, I've been going for runs with my dogs, and they've been really pushing me because – I mean, they got all the cardio in the world. So, but um, I I really do feel that um, I I've, I've been really doing a lot of thinking mentally on what we can do next year to make defense more fun. I feel if defense is more fun, guys will be more excited about it. So, I mean, while while I'm locked up, I've really been uh, doing a lot of thinking. I've been watching a lot of videos, like the um, I watched a documentary on the last dance, I think it's called, with Michael Jordan. Um, I watch a lot of videos on Dennis Rodman, just just key guys that I think are really good defensive players that I really need to look at and really just use what they've been using over the past years. Great, thanks, Devin. And sorry about that, guys. I'm a little bit distracted there. My all of a sudden, I, my headset's connected to about three different devices, and all of a sudden, I got the music from the Zombies soundtrack in my headset. <laughs> I think my daughter's uh, on a FaceTime call with somebody somewhere else in the house. This is this is the new reality, right? <laughs> yeah. <Yep. laughs> so, sorry about that, but thank you, Devin. Um, listen, uh, rookie of the year in your first year. What does that? T t why don't you tell us a little about about what that means for you in terms of setting that expectation for next year? Uh, and, and just, you know, how that feels to, to, to pick up that accolade in your first season? I mean, ever since high school, I always dreamed about uh, playing in the OUA. So, I mean, when I, when I first committed to Algoma, it was really exciting. But um, throughout the year, I mean, I really wasn't really thinking about the awards. I was really thinking of what, what, we, what are we going to do to make the culture within the school better? So... When I realized I got the reward, I thought, wow, you know, um, 
I, I, I personally think I did work really hard this year. Um, I tried always my best when it came to drills, even when I was the most tired. Um, I mean, Rookie of the Year, is, it, it, it's a nice reward to have. I, I appreciate it a lot. And, uh, you know, it's, it's motivating me to work a lot harder next year because now I know I have a lot more eyes focused on me. So uh, I have a lot more um, of my craft to work on, definitely. That's great. And, uh, you know, I, well-deserved, I think, uh, those of us who, who watched you play last year, uh, you know, I think that, does, that award is well-deserved. Uh, you brought some very valuable minutes to the court and the passion that you exhibited when you got in the games, I think, was evident to everyone in the gym. So congratulations uh, for uh, that. I want to talk about that passion for, for a minute. Um, you're a passionate guy. I, I, you know, I don't know you well, but uh, just from watching the games, I can tell that uh, you want to win. Uh, you want everything to go right when you're on the court. Uh, yeah. And when it doesn't, sometimes things can get yeah. a, little bit, a little bit tense out there. Yeah. Uh, how do you reel yourself in, uh, you know, uh, being a passionate player, uh, being a fiery player? How do you reel yourself in and, and recognize that, uh, you know, it's a team game at the end of the day and you got to work yeah. with those guys or you're not going to get it done? Yeah. Um, I think ever since high school, I think it started, I, I was always the, the most passionate guy on the team. I mean, I do it in positive and negative ways, I'll be honest. Uh, sometimes I do lose my temperament, which is something I mentally need to work on. But I, at the end of the day, I, I always tell the guys, you know, I don't do it out of anger. I do it out of care. That's, that's just who I am. I just care a lot about the guys I play with, I work with. I mean, we spend a lot of hours in the gym, too, too many hours in the gym, too many hours on the road to be, to be having little mistakes that shouldn't be happening. And I feel that my anger just kind of comes out and, you know, sometimes I do need to take it down a notch. But at the end of the day, I know that the guys know it's just because I'm a caring player. I just, sometimes I care too much. Sometimes I care too, too little. But at the end of the day, I always care because I just want us to always be top notch. More than 100%. We should be always going 120. So, Coach, maybe I'll ask you then, um, because I've seen you uh, at times, you know, hit the buzzer and get Devin out of games when the passion ratchets up maybe a little bit too high. You know, you yeah. talked about caring maybe a little bit too much uh, and, and finding ways, and that's maturity, right? And that's experience, mm -hmm. finding ways, the right ways to express that. Um, so uh, have there been times when you felt like you needed to, to calm Devin down, get him on the bench, uh, mm -hmm. have a word with him? And, and what's yeah. that relationship like? Uh, have you guys managed to find – because sometimes that can – that can be a bad place to be, right? Have you guys managed to find a, a good spot uh, in that relationship? The thing is, uh, one thing is that Devin reminds me of me. Like, um, off the court, I'm the sweetest, uh, probably nicest guy you probably know. But Devin knows once the curtains at the GLC, once the curtains are on, I am exactly like Devin. Um, We'll just we'll just stop it there. But let's just say I do not like to lose at all anything. So I understand Devin. And you know what? As a coach, you have to find guys. I would rather have a guy that you have to reel in a little bit and say, Hey, listen, Devin, right now, I know you try I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to care, but you you're not focused on the right thing. So just take a minute and let's refocus on the task at hand, and then you'll see that it's gonna be better. Listen, when I was younger, that was exactly like Devin. Losing a drill? But listen, <laughs> it was not happening. And I never changed. But with maturity, you understand that if you're able to focus on the task at hand, usually things are going to get better. Uh, I mean, and that's what I, that's what I want. I want guys that are fiery, that care a lot. I would rather have to take a guy out and say, hey, listen, you know, right now it's just a little bit too much and you're veering a little bit off course. Let's get back to being on course. Then spending my whole day trying to motivate you to do something. That's, I don't know, man. That's, for me, that's, that's not the type of guy I want. So for Devin, I would say it's really taking a second. I look at Devin into his eyes. He looks at me and I see myself and I say, the next two words I'm going to tell to this man, they have to be important and they have to be something that he's going to understand. Because Devin listens. Even if he's in that mode, he's listening. So usually... Devin, tell me if I'm wrong, but usually I look at Devin and I say, Devin, take a minute, but when you're going to go back in, this is what I want you to focus on and put all your energy on there, and trust me, things are going to go better. And 
So these yeah. are this is how I kind of communicate with Devin because I don't want to take away the hunger because this is what we, we need that. We need that hunger, the guy that wants to go. So I'm seeing something on a, uh, uh, being external away from him. That's something he's not seeing. So I got to guide him more than anything else. So that's kind of what we, uh, this is how the relationship kind of works. I wouldn't change Devin for, for the world, man. Just get him refocused so he can go hard again. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, you talk, and you talk about motivation. And, and Devin, you mentioned, you know, dreaming of playing in the OUA. Uh, and, and, and now you do. Uh, not only that, but rookie of the year in your first year uh, with the Thunderbirds in the OUA. And so maybe, maybe talk a little bit about that first season and what that transition is like um, to playing in the OUA um, and, and what, you know, what the things are that, that you maybe were surprised by uh, when, you, when you stepped your game up to that next level. Um, I feel the, um, the pace. The pace was the number one thing that, that really caught my eye. I mean, you could watch the game, but until you're really in the game, you really don't understand the, the fast pace that the game is going at and that a split second of a, of a decision you make, whether it's right or wrong, could change a lot. And I mean, like coming into the league, I really realized little things matter, such as stretching, rolling out your body, little things. Coaches stressed to us all year about this, especially with a team full of rookies, because we did have a lot of guys uh, get injured this year. And, you know, I feel that taking care of your body is another important thing when you're coming to a league like this, such fast pace, and you're almost playing every weekend and you got your practices three times a day or twice a day. Um, one thing I, the biggest thing about it, I would say, is the body. I mean, taking care of the body. I'm just happy I, I came out this year injury free. Um, I feel healthy. My body's healthy. Um, I mean, it was one heck of a year, whether it was uh, about losing or winning. Um, I think we fought through a lot of adversity this year. So um, the chemistry was built this year. And I, that, I'm really excited to start with some of the new guys and even the guys I played with last year. I'm really excited for next year for sure well uh, that's great to hear and uh you know i know coach has been working hard trying to bring in uh some new players uh done very well uh on the recruitment trail this year and uh maybe you could talk a minute about what you see in some of the new guys coming you don't have to be specific but um maybe what you see about uh you know from from the sort of recruitment uh side of things uh, well, what I've seen so far, I mean, uh, I haven't really met any of the guys uh, since all the uh, pandemic went down. I kind of left uh, home pr pretty early. So, um, but uh, a couple of guys actually recently uh, messaged me happy birthday. And I know that's uh, away from basketball, but I mean, that I don't even know the guys and they're saying happy birthday because they know they're my teammate. I mean, I, I, I just thought like, man, these guys care. Like we go back to the caring. I mean, little things like that, little action like that shows he wants to be connected. That's the chemistry he wants to build with me. And I, and that's one thing I've noticed. Uh, guys like Ben and uh, the Benjamin brothers, uh, like, you know, I, I, I see a character in them and I haven't even met them personally. So, um, and Coach got us doing reports on working out and these guys have the reports in on time and they're doing their workouts every every week and you can see the development every week in their workouts and the videos and you know I'm, I'm i'm really excited to work with these guys i want to see that hunger in the weight room i want to see the hunger at practice like coach said when the curtains are closed we're in business you know um i just really want to see the type of energy these guys will bring next year i'm excited for that for sure yeah, yeah there's certainly no substitute for uh, for caring uh, and I know mm -hmm. Coach uh, believes that as well. So uh, caring yeah. will take you a long way if you can translate that into effort and, and uh, you know, build on that. So that's great. Uh, Coach, I want to flip it back to you for a second. You mentioned uh, that it, maybe there's a session going on later uh, with the players. Is that, is that the first session or, or did I read that wrong? Or, or uh, what, what things are you starting to do now? We're into May. Um, to try to get the guys, I, I, you know, I know you're sending them training and things like that, but is there, are, are there other things that you're doing with them now uh, as the weather gets a little nicer outside uh, to, well, it's really nice in my background, but uh, as the weather gets nicer outside in Northern Ontario, uh, what are the kinds of things that you're doing with, with from a team? Uh, listen, we, we kind of have, we have, um, not to go into too much details, but there's certain things we want to get done. And one thing is, is our vision. Uh, some of the older guys, they truly understand the vision. 
uh, what we're trying to do. Uh, and part of it is getting our IQ level up as well as our physical IQ up. And, and I think Devin kind of really knows what I'm talking about when I say that. And I feel like, you know, the first, at first I wasn't ready for it because, you know, everybody was away. But now I kind of came up with a plan where, you know, we're actually going to start doing certain things so that we can get the IQ level up. So these guys can kind of understand we just, what, what are the things we need to do. And I understand I cannot get everyone on there at the same time. So basically what I do is I create a video and I share it with on our platform so that the guys can get to see, okay, okay, this is what he means when he talks about this. And the advantage of this is that these guys, they can go back now and keep watching it if they want to learn different things, if they want to see different things. So what I'm saying, the first one is going to happen, we kind of call these classes basketball 101. So this is when it starts. Uh, we go in, we just, start, we just start from the start. It starts with the character, understanding what the vision, the mission, and tasks that we're going to need to get done, how we need to do different things. And then we start from the base, 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 starting from terminology, even to the way uh, – you can even ask Devin. Now Devin sees the court in a different manner than he ever seen it before. Like, these things are – these things are what we're going to be working on. And it's important that the new guys understand it and they come with an open mind, especially the open mind. Uh, so that's what we're thinking about. That's what I'm thinking of doing tonight. And um, all the guys are going to be able to see it. They're going to be able to access it. And it's always going to be on our platform, so they're always going to be able to get back to it. So is this the first one, Coach, or have you done this? Did you do this last year? No. Last year, uh, I didn't have the opportunity to do that. I mean, I came in. It was 10 days, and then I saw the guys, basically. Um, so – this is something that definitely we would be doing maybe in person, but now maybe it gives us an opportunity to do it, you know, um, online. And maybe, you know, maybe it's, it's a lot better. Guys come in already having an understanding. And one thing that we know is if you understand something, you can be quicker, faster, more efficient when you do it physically. So now, Devin, you got uh, – just add another tape session on, right? You got game tape and now you got coach tape. <laughs> so – just another thing to add to your daily routine, right? Yeah. I mean, when we have you back on, I'm going to ask you which one you prefer. So be prepared for that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, guys. I'm going to flip it over to Jay. He's always got a couple more questions, but uh, I appreciate your time with me. So thanks, guys. Well, Coach, uh, what, what came into your consideration for, uh, for Devin for Rookie of the Year uh, this year? Oh, really, the, the ability to, to improve. Uh, the ability to come in and earlier in the season, I know he wasn't happy about it, but I was kind of uh, trying to protect him a little bit, uh, you know, because he was a little bit uh, erratic defensively and going all over the place and all that. And I, I needed him to understand how to focus on certain things without killing the energy. And I felt like once he understand that, he took major steps and he was able to, to, to guard, I mean, higher level individuals while uh, playing the game. So for me, out of all the guys that actually came in, that was the first year, he was the one I felt uh, was able to, to, to grasp these concepts um, the best. So that's why um, the Rookie of the Year award. I mean, you come in brand new to the league and, and that near the end, you're basically in the rotation, playing lots of minutes, having the ability to play more and more. I mean, you look at the, 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 the transformation from, from August to basically March, I mean, it was a no-brainer for me, a rookie of the year. And I mean, you, you mentioned about fall till, 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 till March. What, what progression did you see in, in, in Devin's play and his, uh, his character? Oh, my God. I mean, in his character, I mean, I saw something where, you know, having the ability to focus more and understand different things. Also, offensively, starting to have the ability to, to get a few baskets here and there and, and scoring here and there. But defensively, I mean, once, we, once he actually started really grasping the defensive concepts, his ability to kind of slow down some of the high scorers on other teams, it was something else. Like, uh, I mean, it's not even an exaggeration. Like, some guys had the production, some of them cut in half when Devin was able to actually put the defensive plan together. So these things are, are, are very important. Um, when you start uh, evaluating players. So that's where I really saw a, a major progression. 
uh, the level of understanding. And he said it himself, taking care of his body because he has a really, really tough job. I mean, he's taking care of some of the guys on a daily basis. I mean, on a Friday, you got one guy, and then on a Saturday, you yeah. still got the same kind of guy, like a score. Like, it's crazy. And I was able to put Devin uh, on these individuals, and he was able to do, you know, a decent job. Now, definitely Devin knows what I'm going to say. Now, decent is good. Now, we got to be able to do a great job on these guys and, and, and translate it into wins. So that's the progression I saw, and I want to keep seeing that progression for the rest of the years he's going to be playing at Algoma University. And Devin, I think Kevin and I have come since we started the show that the coach, the coach, it's not no holds barred here, but he's letting players talk with no no punishment. Your your thoughts on coach in his first year and being at Algoma with with him being his first year? Um, I mean, with coach being his first year, I think I think he did uh, one heck of a job. Um, I mean, like he said, like the concepts I've learned this year, I mean, they, I, I've, le- I've learned a whole new defense through him. I mean, I, I used to force a uh, baseline and not play in the gap, but then that changed all this year. And I mean, I mean, coach has really opened my mind on the court. Like he talked about how my mind's really open to the basketball court now. I mean, I see so many more things. Um, coach has really done a good job stressing classroom work. I mean, uh, a lot of guys need to get their, their average up. And I feel like a lot of guys got, got up their average this year. I know I was one of them with coach always uh, on my back asking me about uh, projects, tests and stuff. So, you know, um, I think coach really brought um, an energy we needed this year. I mean, in terms of building, Um, I mean, practice, practice was tough, but you know, it was tough to a point where we were getting better. I mean, we had good games where we were competing and then we had our bad games where it, it was just no competition. I mean, we had we had some of our best games against the best teams, and it just shows that it's 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 just uh it's steps it's steps we're going by step by step, and coach really stressed about that and about how everything takes time. We just gotta keep working at a craft every day, and coach has really done a good job making sure guys are getting in the gym, guys are getting in the weight room, doing what they need to do in order to stay healthy, whether it was nutrition or just physical appearance. Uh, he he would always make little jokes too you know in practice to keep practice uh you know in a good mood even if we just came off a tough loss you know so I think coach did uh one heck of a job this year in terms of what we're going to be able to do next year because of this year wow Devin that was it was almost like you knew that question was coming (laughs) and and I gotta say Jay that that was almost not fair usually you wait until coach's office internet goes down (laughs) And then it's a black screen in the bottom corner. And then you ask that question so we can get an honest answer. But, Devin, hey, A-plus for that. That was a great, great response. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, one, thing right, I gotta, one thing I got to mention, I know this goes on social media and that, but that new quarantine haircut, I'm not sure who did it. How is it staying in place with that wind behind you on the beach? You know, uh, it's, I, t- I take a page out of the Carrie Fraser book of, of hairstyling. So, you know, this thing is locked in, even, even though you can see we got the tropical winds coming in, it's, I'm dialed in. I, I got to say, though, Devin, best haircut on the panel, uh, you know, even though, even though I thought I did a pretty good job on my COVID cut, uh, you got the best haircut on the panel today, for sure. Oh, I appreciate that, Kevin. Appreciate that. <laughs> no, no, Coach and Devin, we have, we have Kevin on the beach, me at the George Leach. Where would you guys rather be? Um, I, I gotta say, I'm I'm missing the gym, man. Just the uh, just a hoop. I I just want to shoot a hoop. I mean, my neighborhood they took down some of the rims, so guys can't be in the park. So, I mean, I I gotta say it's gotta be the gym. I think Vince, I think Vince Filardo, uh has a has a hoop up near him. At least he did a couple weeks ago. So really? not not promoting you guys getting together or anything, <laughs> but just letting you know. <laughs> Getting us in trouble, getting us in trouble, right? (laughs) (laughs) What about you, Uh, Coach? Me, me for me, you guys know it, man. It's a GLC. Uh, Man, listen, listen, sometimes I pass in front of the school. I'm like, can I just get in there like, you know, five minutes, man, just to see if it's still, you know, what's going on? I mean, you guys know, man, I I don't even have internet at my house. Like, I used to spend all my time there, so. Um, for me, the GLC, man, more than the beach, for real, definitely. 
<laughs> and, and, and that's totally understandable. And it's something, Devin, we, we talked about uh, off of, uh, like off air. And first I'll go Devin, then Coach, then Kevin. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the OUA. We don't know if it's going to be short in season or anything like that. But when it comes to, as a player, a coach, and the voice of the Thunderbirds, Devin first, if you had to play in front of no crowds, your thought on that and if, what, if that would happen? I mean, it, 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 would be, it would be a tough thing to adapt to at first. I mean, crowd, crowds bring energy to the game. I mean, when you, when you have home advantage, you, you got the upper advantage in some sort of way. And, and I feel that's one thing, too, coming into the league this year. I realize fans do make a difference. Going, going to away games, you see the fans go crazy. And it really, it really does put pressure on the, on the opposite team. So, I mean, with no fans, it's something all teams will have to adapt to. So we'll, we'll all be on the same boat. But um, it's definitely something players will have to get used to, and it might take. Uh, I think it might take quite a bit to get used to, honestly. And coach, wow, playing without fans—that's that's something else. Um, I mean, definitely, uh, you know, part of what we do is you know is it, it, entertainment. Having the ability to come in and and showcase what we worked on and our craft, and this is. To be to, to to be there in front of the fans. So playing with no fans, I mean, it can be done. I mean, when you think about it, I mean, this is this is how we practice. This is how we do different things. This is how we usually compete. There are no fans, but there's always some people around. You know, somebody to say something or, you know, to look at the game and to 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 make it kind of, you know, bring a little external thing out of uh, the two teams. So for me, it'd be tough. But hey, if we have to do it without fans, I mean. We got to do it without fans, especially because my one of my goals is actually to get, you know, the Sault Ste. Marie uh, population coming into the GLC. I mean, my dream would be, you know, uh, the city shuts down, man. The city shuts down. Everybody come down and watch the games. So if you tell them they can't come, I'm telling you the first day, Sault Ste. Marie, the first day you can come into the gym. We're getting everybody in there, and we're going wild. That's what that's what we're gonna do. We need to do that. <laughs> we need to do that in Sault Ste. Marie. <laughs> and, and, and Kevin, with you, with you and Mike sitting behind the on the mics behind the camera, and staring across to uh, no fans and just seeing the teams there, what would what would that be like from your your point of view? Yeah, obviously, you know it's nice uh, when you got some fans in the gym. Um, you know, as coach sort of alluded to, we don't always have, we don't always have a full house in the gym at the GLC. I know some, I know some other places, uh, draw some decent crowds in the OUA. Um, you know, I, I can remember back to 2011 when we had the OCAA championships, uh, and we played game one, uh, against Sheridan college uh, at the SR center. And we bust in, we, we bust in the elementary school kids from across the city. We had 3000 uh, screaming kids in, in the SR center for our basketball game. And it was, it was unreal. Um, you know, and the energy in that, in that game was wild. Sheridan, uh, you know, I think fair to say it was a much better team. Um, and, and we almost pulled it out, uh, down to, I think it was a four point loss in the end, um, you know, against a, a much higher ranked, uh, stronger team. So that's just, you know, speaking to the energy and the, the advantage that a home crowd can bring you. Right. Um, so, yeah, tough to do, but uh, at the same time, uh, safety first, uh, player safety, uh, student athlete safety, I think is, you know, paramount. Uh, if we can do it safely, then let's do it. And if that means that there's no fans in the gym, well, then, uh, you know, then, then I'd rather do that. And uh, puts more pressure on me, Jay. It means people will be watching online. And uh, <laughs> so... Um, but yeah, no, I, obviously it'll be quiet, uh, quieter than, than, uh, than we're used to, but you know, if it, if it lets us get back to playing basketball, then, then I'm all for it. Um, you know, as long as, as long as we can do it in a way that's safe. And this year's getting a little bit away from a goal basketball, but Kev, I'll go with you first coach, then Devin. Again, NBA, we got no control, but we're all, we're all basketball fans here and the return of the NBA what do you think would be the best from a fan's point of view of, to offer before they go into postseason that? What, what do you think, Kev? Oh, geez. I don't know. Um, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a bit, uh, air on the safe side of things. I mean, I, 
I'd almost prefer to see the seasons just wrap up, have no, no champion this year. Let's keep people safe. I mean, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. So take that for what it's worth. But, um, you know, I just, I just want to make sure that we're doing the right thing so that we can get back in the gyms, back in the rinks, back on the courts, on the fields uh, in September. That's the, t- to me, that's more important than trying to finish up a season with an asterisk beside it. Um, you know, in terms of, of trying to figure out who makes a playoff at this point, I, I don't know. It's a whole new season. Guys have been off for two months, and, uh, you know, and, and we've talked to the players – here and and every one of them has mentioned, uh, you know, I, and I think they're they're motivated and they're staying sharp. Uh, but every one of them has mentioned that that, that that that's sometimes a bit of a struggle to stay stay motivated uh, when you're locked down and you're not with other people. And uh, so I don't know, um, you know, I think it's almost like if you need to have a championship, just take the season standings as they were, maybe maybe have a few exhibition games and jump right into playoffs. I know that doesn't help some teams that wouldn't be in the playoffs, but maybe that's a good thing. Um, I don't know. Anyway, Coach? Uh, me on my end, um, I actually, like, I kind of know some guys um, that have the, that play in the NBA. And um, I'll tell you that their feeling is mostly if they're able to have a good – uh, we're looking about three, four weeks to kind of get ready and, and, and do these different things. And if they would, if they had the opportunity to play it, uh, play, play it out and uh, finish, uh, that would be best for them. And I understand uh, there's a lot of different things you have to think about. You know, like you think about like for them, that's their jobs. And for them, it's really taking a year away from, from what they're doing. Uh, that's, what I, that's what I know uh, the guys are expecting. Um, but at the end of the day, I kind of, I kind of think the same thing Kevin, uh, said, if it can be done in a safe environment, I mean, let's get it done then. If it really, really can be done in a safe environment, uh, why not? Let's do it. But I feel like, you know what? I mean, it's a sport that brings everybody together. I mean, yes, it might finish a little bit later. You give it a month and then you go into maybe, uh, some type of playoff format. That would be, that would be great. I mean, I think that would be the best. That would be the best bet, as long as everybody, especially uh, the families of the athletes, uh, the athletes. I feel they're, I feel they're going to be fine because they're going to be able to access things, you know, kind of quickly. But if the families of the athletes and uh, these people and the families of the people kind of working there uh, can be safe, then yeah, why not? Let's 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 get it going. And Devin, from a player's point of view, what do you would think? Um. I mean, I think I think it's tough. I love I, I'm in love with the NBA playoffs. I mean, it's one of the most exciting times of the year for me to watch some of the the most uh, intense basketball in the world to watch, especially at that time. But um, I mean, like like uh, we were saying, like safety safety comes first, and um, if there's no no uh, things put down, restrictions or anything to do with uh, getting the NBA back quicker, then I feel that maybe we might have to sacrifice a bit of the NBA for the safety of others because you only live once, but basketball will always stay. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's just important to stay healthy. And I feel that, you know, as much, as much as it's a financial crisis too for people that work within the stadiums and the coaches and the, and the players, I mean, I mean, we can take this time to use it as like a, more of like a mental break. So, like, even if we do take that long year break from the NBA, that next year is going to be maybe even better than making the NBA come back quicker. So, And, and you said a break, and that's one thing I'm going to put you on the spot here, Devin. You, you said before, off camera, it's been a long time since you and your mom been together this long. Yeah. If she was on camera, are you driving her nuts yet? Uh, I want to say yeah, but... uh. I mean, when we talk about laundry, dishes, all that stuff, I mean, I, I, I contribute, I clean, but um, she does have a little fits where she gets annoyed at me. But I know she's going to miss me when I leave again, so I know it's never that serious. And I, I, know, I know Coach has a second room, and I think Kevin's wife's to the point that he may, she might ship him off to get the AT&T's house. <laughs> yeah, I've already occupied the second room, Jay. Sorry, Devin. <laughs> uh. <laughs> The problem is, is Northern Breweries makes us stop every day at Kevin's house, Coach, so you have to get used to that. 
It actually stopped in front of my house yesterday, and then they delivered next door. I I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got the wrong address, man. They must have. They must have got the wrong address. But Kevin's doing fundraising for you guys, Devin. He's doing all his cans are being returned and the money's being donated to the basketball team. So uh, you're wow. going to have a nice, nice fundraising check when uh, the season starts. That means wow. that means you guys can fly to every game. Wow. <laughs> With the amount Kevin. of money that you raised on that fundraiser. Man. You know, I see I, you, I'm Kevin. Gonna I'm going to tell you, the team, everyone's going to appreciate you, man. Oh, man. <laughs> 15 hour bus rides are not fun. 15 hour bus rides are not fun. (laughs) But Coach, Kevin's not happy with Coach because he still hasn't provided the buffet yet, though. So, (laughs) listen, if you're flying everywhere, we're going to do the buffet when it's safe to do the buffet. Coach and I are going to go out, we're going to hit one. Well, I can't thank everybody for taking the time. And I apologize yesterday with the internet going down, so we did it today. Can't. Uh, thank everybody enough and uh, I just have to take a minute to all the sponsors be right back guys I'd like to thank uh, Allstate uh, on Great Northern Road the Expedia Cruise Ship Center Cheryl Ann Robinson um, Elite Post to Post Sioux Overhead Doors and Foremost Pets and uh, I wouldn't be um, able to do the show every week without these sponsors so I'd just like to thank uh, all the sponsors and guys again I can't thank you enough for taking your time and Devin, just before we go, Nick Galen's going to be our guest next week. Can you uh, give us a, a little bit on what your 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 thoughts on uh, Nick? Uh, Nick, uh, I mean, at the beginning of the year, me and Nick, you know, we had our complications with each other, like any other team would when a new player joins. I mean, like we said, we got to build the chemistry, right? But uh, Nick, uh, I think he's one of those guys that cares too. And I, I think that's where we can build our relationship is the fact that we both care and and Nick is hungry. I, I I always see him and Vince together in the gym, and those guys, and they're always working together. And I, and I think me and Nick's relationship will build over the next couple of years. I mean, we'll work at things. We'll we'll make sure to work with each other. Um, but Nick, otherwise, off off and on the court, um, he's a good guy. He's a really good guy, really caring guy, and um, he eats a lot. He really eats a lot. <laughs> that. I'm sorry. That boy, eats, man. I've never met a man that brings a full meal before practice. I've never met him. So, Kev, he's keeping up to me and you then, Kev. Yeah, I wish I had that metabolism, though. <laughs> tell you. Yeah, I, can, I can eat a lot, but my metabolism isn't anywhere near his, probably. Nick's just trying to put on some weight because his coach has got him uh, playing the five. Hey, eh, coach? Yeah. Oh. Uh, with some of those big bodies, man, he's, he's he, you know, he he's gonna need to be strong. I mean, uh, Nick, we he knows I kind of talked to him a little bit before the show. Um, <clears throat> we 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 have um uh, we have some goals in mind, and uh, brother's gonna have to eat to to to, <laughs> to maintain these goals. <laughs> no, Devin, when we were talking about Nick and and that is. He he's still. Last time I heard, he's still stuck in Sault Ste. Marie. Would that be driving you nuts to still be here, quarantine where you're not around family? Um, I think so. To be honest, uh, I mean, at first I was kind of going crazy coming back home to quarantine, but uh, then I mean, doing things with my mom, I realized I'm like, yo, I've been away from my mom for the longest time, and you know, now it's time to really get back connected with her and just just be with everyone I love and the people that I'll be away from for quite a bit after this is all over. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to take advantage of what I have here in Ottawa. But I mean, Sault Ste. Marie has done a lot for me too. I mean, coach talked about me being focused. So, I mean, if I was still in Sault Ste. Marie, I feel like I'd still be focused on my craft a lot more, but um, I feel mentally it would just be tougher in terms of being more lonely, being to myself type of thing. And Kevin, are you uh, are you building the forts for your daughter, or is she doing that herself? <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot of fort building going on. It, it's sort of a combination. Sometimes she she tackles it with her brother. Sometimes on her own. On the weekend, we had a pretty good one going. We had hockey sticks in there. And, uh, actually, I just heard uh, about five minutes ago a basketball game broke out just outside my office door. I was I thought I was going to have to leave the conversation. So. <laughs> Lots of interesting stuff going on in the Hemsworth house. And I'm sure it's no different, uh, no different all over the place. So yeah, they're interesting times for sure. Devin, any, any NBA 2K? Oh, lots, lots, lots. <laughs> oh, so much. Uh, 
I'm not gonna lie. So much last week, I kind of deleted it and I switched to NHL. NHL. <laughs> Well, Devin, I was telling Jay, I had my son, I had my son design the Algoma U court in NBA 2K. If you could figure out a way to share that out with the guys on the team, I'll, I'll, we'll make that happen. That might get oh, you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I would, love, I would love to see that. Yeah, I would love to see that. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I sent Coach some screenshots, so he, he can share them it, with you. But. Okay. It definitely looked very good. It looked very good. I loved it. I loved it. You definitely uh, connect with Devin and have them share amongst the team. I think they're going to love the court. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's something yeah. I, I got. I have a, a big, uh, a big uh, interview tomorrow, and it's not with Agoma, but it's Ryan Hunter of the Kansas City uh, Chiefs Super Bowl champions. And after I get that out of the way, um, Kev, I'll, I'll make sure I touch base with you and see what we can do to uh, get the guys into the uh, the Agoma NBA 2K. Nice. Sounds great. So yeah. Well, again, guys, thanks a lot for uh, taking the time today, and uh, Devin. Hopefully, we see you soon. And next week, ATN and Kevin uh, will be joined by Nick and. Back on Monday at 11 o'clock. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Jay. Thank you. Talk Thanks, Jay.